Okay, good morning. Welcome back to the Upload TV, and uh, thanks for joining the Average Golfer at uh, Four Golf in Chester, my uh, new home for club testing moving forward. Uh, can't wait to get stuck into this range. It's the tightest. Um, well, AP. What we're going to go with now? AP two. Um, so this one slightly different. Just on the AP three. Check out that video. Um, AP2 is very much the, the better player iron, I suppose you'd call it. Um, forged head, so expecting a bit better feel out of this one, or improved feel at least, that's what they're going for. Very small and compact in design. Um, it is, to all intents and purposes, the better player iron out the range, and uh, it will be interesting to see how it gets on in the hands of an 8 handicap golfer, and uh, we'll soon find out. Got to say, Needs a shaft button on the end of it, but to look at, superb look, and I'll say that about all the range, to be fair, they look stunning golf clubs. Uh, question is, can the average golfer perform and get some decent numbers out of this AP2? We'll soon find out. Okay, so uh, camera moved and all ready to go now with this uh, Titleist AP2. Don't forget, this is a forged club head. Uh, expecting some lovely feel out of this club. I've just done the video for the AP3. The performance out of that was absolutely superb. Don't forget to watch that video. Um, so the thing is with this, now we're changing from... This is back to now very much a traditional club in terms of, first of all, a loft. This is lofted at 34 degrees. Uh, it is a more compact design. We'll have a look at this one behind the ball in a second. We'll do that now, actually. It's still, it's not the thinnest top line. It's not the most compact club. Um, don't get me wrong. It's, um, it's a stunning looking golf club to look at. Um, muscle back is the way I'd describe it in terms of the way, what you see from the back of the club. But again, stunning to look at. Let's see how it performs. So that's uh, golf balls hit with this uh, AP2 and uh, once again we'll go straight into the figures as I see them and I'll give you my personal opinion from the strikes that I hit. Aeroplane going above us, I hope you can't pick that one up on camera. Um, right, so let's uh, straight away I'll probably talk about my strike. Um, I didn't hit the ball as well as what I'd like to have done. So let's be fair to the AP2s and tight list here. However, that's likely to be how I would strike the ball inconsistently. Don't forget this is the perspective of the average golfer. So club head speed again, um, all in around that sort of 81 mile an hour mark, uh, apart from the bottom one which really fell off that last shot and again wasn't too good of a strike. Um, almost like to take that one out of the equation in terms of our assessments as well, in terms of numbers. We won't in terms of the overall assessment of the club's performance in the hands of someone like me. But for this, like I said, the one interesting factor was we got 154 to 171 in this dispersion difference between uh, my shortest and longest shot. Very much like I said, inconsistent strike, but it was something that I noticed in this club. I struggled to find the middle. Um, and to get a consistent performance out of it. I don't mind it in smaller, more compact clubs, and to be fair, like I said, I'd recently reviewed the MP18 and really liked it and seemed to, um, it seems still plenty forgiving. I didn't quite find that to be the case in this uh, AP2. Probably needs a better ball striker is my assessment on how I felt, um, than, than me, that is. Um, Spin number was very good and again that's the difference again don't forget 34 degrees of loft so this now is getting up to the best uh, what five and a half spin but certainly average around that five mark and again that would be a good number for me. Um, in terms of the feel yes it was very very nice. Um, 
and the looks okay yeah were good but like I said for me there's a massive compromise in overall performance for someone at my level so this 154 to 171 carry distance when you compare that to like I said the AP3 for example for someone at my level you would ask yourself why would you why would you bother considering this AP2 when the AP3 offers so much more. And I know this isn't a head-to-head -head video we're doing, but I'm just trying to give you my perspective on this AP2. Stunning golf club, probably, like I said, needs to be in the hands of someone better than me uh, and looking for something different out of an iron than I would necessarily be uh, as an average golfer. That said, stunning looking. I'm sure in the right hands, this will be a good performer, but that's my assessment for you anyway. Right, thanks for watching. One more to go this morning at least. I'm gonna do a reach, you know, AP everything. I can't remember them all, but AP1 is next on the list. That's the ultimate game improver iron, as they say. So we'll see if that can improve the average golfer. Anyway, thanks for watching. Thumbs up, comments down below as ever, and uh, thank you for watching.